In this movie, I'd like to show you a very powerful combination of two great plugins for real-time, photographic quality landscape design in SketchUp. These two plugins are Scatter and Bloom Unit. Here I want to show you how easy it is to use Scatter to very quickly create a simple landscaping plan with incredible detail and all of which in true real-time. So here we start with our SketchUp scene, with a ground section of approximately 10 by 15 metres, with two garden bed areas included and a hilly area to the right. In the bottom right corner of the screen, we also have a live Bloom Unit viewport running. Now before we start using the Scatter plugin, we need to make sure we have two items. Firstly, each surface or collection of surfaces that we plan to scatter our objects onto needs to be saved as groups. And secondly, our scatter objects could be inserted as groups, but for far more efficient file management and faster interactivity, it is highly recommended that these objects are always inserted as components. In front of our planned landscaping area, I've already inserted a selection of vegetation elements from Bloom Unit's inbuilt proxy or component library system. So if we start by opening the Bloom Unit component manager and clicking firstly on the grass section, we can see the corresponding library details on the right side of the dialog panel. Then we click onto each of the other inserted plants, where you can see these items have been selected from the Evermotion Volume 124 library set. The small tree is a young summer orange tree from the Bloom Unit's Laubwerk Tree Library. Now we move the camera down to take a closer look at the selected grass section where, in the SketchUp view, you can see the low detail proxy model and, in the Bloom Unit viewport, you can see the corresponding full detail version that is being simultaneously rendered in real time within the cloud server rendering system. Before we go any further, an important tip is that if you plan to manipulate very large numbers of copied components in your SketchUp scene, as we will certainly be doing with this grass section, it will speed up the scatter regenerate process considerably if you can simplify the SketchUp proxy model as much as possible. So here we replace the geometry of the many separate blades of grass with a simple polygon disk. Then delete all the grass blades and replace those with a single line at the centre for indicating the height and upward orientation of the grass sections. Whilst at the same time, you will notice that the fully modelled version of the grass section remains entirely unchanged in the live Bloom Unit viewport. To create our first scatter group, we start by clicking on the scatter icon in the top menu bar. This opens a dialog panel with all the controls needed to quickly arrange our selected vegetation elements. Next, we select our host areas, which are the grouped surface sections where our scatter objects will be distributed onto. We firstly click on the Picked Grouped Surface icon and then click on the Larger Lawn Area group. Almost immediately you will see the red line segments which denote the scattered initial insertion points across the host surface based on the default distribution settings. Before going any further, we will want to remove the garden bed groups from our Larger Lawn Area group. We do this by scrolling down to the Areas section of the Scatter dialog and select the Pick Area icon and then click on both of the garden beds. Next, we individually select each of these areas and respectively click the Exclude button for both. This Exclude function removes the garden bed areas from the current scatter host area and to confirm this, you will notice the red line segments promptly disappear from these two garden bed areas. We now scroll our dialog display back to the top and in the Scattered Object section we click the Pick Objects icon and then click on our modified grass proxy model. As soon as we do this, you will notice that the red line segments immediately change to red bounding boxes of our selected proxy model. To update our scene to show the actual copied objects, we simply click on the red Regenerate button, which is always visible at the top of the Scatter dialog panel. Almost immediately, you will notice the red bounding boxes change to our modified proxy grass models. And, even more impressively, you will also notice the Bloom Unit viewport immediately updating, showing instances of the fully modelled grass sections at those same locations.
But we need to show a continuous coverage of this grass across the whole lawn area. And to do this, we simply scroll down to the distribution section of the scatter dialog. And we will stick with the default uniform setting for the distribution type. We know our grass section has a diameter of half a meter. So if we set the X and Y spacing at 0.3 meters and the jitter at 0%, this will ensure a good overlap with the neighboring grass sections. So you can again click on the regenerate button to view the detailed result in both SketchUp and in the Bloom unit views. Now if you look closely at the Bloom unit viewport, you will notice that there is an unrealistic repeating pattern across this grass area. This is because the grass sections are currently orientated in the same direction. But this can easily be corrected by scrolling down to the random transform section and clicking the rotation option, which can randomly tilt and rotate these grass sections within the displayed minimum and maximum settings. For lawn grass as opposed to, say, paddock grass, we edit the X and Y minimum and maximum values to zero, and leave the Z value at zero to 359 degrees. When we click the regenerate button again and wait for the Bloom unit viewport to update, we can now see a perfectly random arrangement of these grass sections across the entire lawn area surface. When we zoom down to a very close view of the new grass section, you can actually see the incredible detail of every single blade of this natural looking 3D grass. Let's move the camera across to view the hilly section of ground and add our modelled grass to this section also. We do this by scrolling the scatter dialog back up to the host section and simply add this surface group to the current host surface set. Again, almost immediately across these surface groups, we see the updated distribution of the red boundary boxes of the proxy grass sections, using the same distribution parameters we set earlier. Now we click the regenerate button to show these new added 3D grass sections. However, you can see, especially in the Bloom unit viewport, how the grass here looks like it's stacked in layers up the sloping sections. This is because the default orientation of our scattered objects has been set to point straight up, and on the sloping sections, half the grass section instance will naturally protrude out of the ground at those points, as you can see better in this diagram. To fix this, we scroll down to the bottom part of the distribution section and simply drag the slider from pointing up across to the normal setting, and then click the regenerate button again. Here you will notice the longer time needed for Scatter and SketchUp to process this updated distribution, which is the reason why we needed to simplify the grass section proxy model as we did earlier. You can now see how all the grass sections are properly orientated parallel to the underlying surface at each insertion point, making these grass sections now appear correctly in the Bloom unit viewport. Moving the camera back to view the garden beds, we now want to add another scatter group where we can populate these beds with a separate arrangement of our selected plants. To show that these collections of scatter objects are saved as groups, we open up Outliner, where we can see the name at the top of the scatter dialog box matches the name of the group in the Outliner list, and could be renamed in either location. So to start a new scatter group, we simply close the current scatter dialog box, and click the scatter menu icon again, to open up a clean scatter dialog with a different name and all entries set back to default values. This time, for the host surfaces, we select the two garden bed groups, which again immediately display the red line segments at the default distribution settings. Then, we add our three smaller plants as our scattered objects list. Next, we set the probability of each plant type being inserted in our chosen distribution method. Now we click the Regenerate button again to display the initial distribution of these three plant types in both the SketchUp and Bloom unit views. 
On this occasion, we will change the distribution type from uniform to random. Then, we change the density from 1 to 4 items per square metre, and almost immediately you will see a dramatic jump in the number of red bounding boxes. Clicking the Regenerate button again immediately displays in both the SketchUp and Bloom unit views a virtual jungle of these plants across the two garden beds. Now we deselect the Use Surface Boundaries as Include Area and use the Paint feature to show another method for placing our selected plants. This is done by clicking the Paint Area icon. Leaving the brush radius at 1 metre, we simply paint the two garden bed areas, which uses the random distribution settings to now place these plants. Again, click the Regenerate button to see the resulting view in detail. Now we start yet another scatter group, by again closing the current scatter dialog panel and clicking on the scatter menu icon to start a fresh scatter group. We select the lawn area group again as our host surface and remove the garden bed areas as we did earlier. For our scattered objects, we now select our larger plant. If we click Regenerate, we see a somewhat unrealistic and messy distribution across our host area. To improve this layout, we firstly switch on Random Rotation and then select Random Scale and change the range values from 50% to 150%, with the default XYZ aspect ratio locked. This time, when we click Regenerate, we have a much more natural distribution of our larger yellow flowered plants. Another parameter that can be very useful in the distribution section is collisions. This will redistribute our objects based on the amount of bounding box overlap we set in the size multiplier, with the default value at 100%. So if the default collisions option enabled, we can see the difference that this option makes. Now after deselecting the Use Surface Boundaries as Include Area option, we again select the Paint tool from our Areas section. And using the set distribution parameters, we paint a new area along the fence line to populate this with our selected large plant type. Scrolling back up to the host section of the dialog panel, we can click on the pick points icon and simply click anywhere on the host surface to precisely insert individual placement points. As you can see here, this has the added advantage of randomly rotating and scaling each plant as they are placed. And using SketchUp's normal group edit mode, we can also individually move, copy or delete any of the inserted scatter objects to precisely refine our object layout where needed. Now finally, we use SketchUp's standard Move Copy tool to place our chosen orange tree around our lawn area. If we need to edit any of the various scatter groups we have created, 
We simply click on that group in our SketchUp view to highlight it. Then open the context menu and select the Edit Scatter group to bring up the respective scatter dialog panel. This will be populated with all the settings used to create that group earlier. Here we apply the random rotation transform to get a more natural looking arrangement of the small plants. For many areas of application, but particularly in the landscape design sector, Scatter makes a huge difference, not only as a powerful design tool, but also when combined with packages such as Bloom Unit. The user can readily create extremely detailed and high quality photographic level imagery for their designs, or even interactively share their live sessions with their clients and colleagues, while exploring different viewpoints and design options with changing ambient light or sky conditions. Here are a few images from other projects where we have previously used both Scatter and Bloom Unit. Certainly not the type of output you would expect from using SketchUp. With SketchUp and these two plugins, a whole new standard in landscape design and communication has now been created. And if you haven't tried either plugin already, please separately download them from getscatter.com and bloomunit.com for their respective free 14-day trials. It will help you do more business more easily.